Before we get into this video, I just wanted to let you know that Dom and I are doing a virtual live show on May 12th at 7 p.m. Central. Tickets are $10. It's going to be a really good show. We've been working very hard on it. If you guys haven't seen all the promo on social media, I think it's really funny in my opinion, but go check it out. I will have it linked down below. We have normal tickets, then we have VIP. You guys can do like a little meet and greet. If you guys ever want us to do anything together, um, these ticket sales matter. So um, I will have everything linked down below. Love you guys. Enjoy the video. Today, we have Dominique Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, her. Gas up, shoddy, pull up to the party. This is making my skin look so plump, when in reality, it's peeling. <laughs> I just need everyone to know how off our mood has been for the past three hours. I put that song on and look at you go. That was magic. I think that was all I needed. And I didn't know how to put my finger on what I needed. But that was it? That was it. Should we make some recess drinks? Should we make some, do you have a drink in here you want? Like a little, a little drink moment. A little drink moment. Ooh, okay, we're gonna have a whole moment with some square wine glasses, guys. We're having a little moment here. Here's Better Booch. We love Better Booch over here. Guys, I got these little lights. I need to get more, obviously, from Amazon for under here. I'll link them below. They changed the game. I feel rich with this kitchen now that I have these lights there. Yeah. I say that as my filter thing is broken here and I have to leave a comment below if you want a house tour of my new house. Dream puppy. Ah. Oh, cheers, bonches to gut health. I love the coordination with the socks and the Thank top. You that so should happen much. a lot more. That should happen more. Protection oh, for that. Shout out Lauren Elizabeth, socks and sandals. All right, guys. Yeah. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Welcome to another Cooking with Kinsey video. So today we are making our, well, actually Dom's order, her favorite tacos at Velvet Taco. This isn't what I get, but this is what Dom gets. So I've actually only had it once for my thing. It's literally dank kush, bruh. If you guys have never been to Velvet Taco, like, sorry. Yeah, that really sucks. I don't know what to tell you. We went to Whole Foods. So we're here, we're ready. We're gonna start with the tofu. I've actually never made this recipe, so I'm not teaching Dom anything. And I don't really like cooking with tofu. I only did it one time for you. Oh, you're not teaching me? Well, I am gonna do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> you She's really think, worried there, guys. You made me think I was gonna have to do something. Yeah. Well, the tofu, I just, I can cook the tofu. I like tofu. Because if we're gonna do the air fryer. Yeah, so you just cut it into cubes, yeah? You gotta squeeze it out, though. So what we need to do is put it in, pa in paper towel and oh. dab it. Let's get into it. First thing you're gonna wanna do is, oh, there's gonna be juices. Ew. Juices will be flowing. That noise. Okay, chill. Don't make Tofu feel bad about herself. It's No, she didn't ask to be this way. Tofu didn't ask to come with juices, but she has some. Take her out. Okay. And that's on extra firm. Can I get a plate? Maybe some support. Very frat culture of me to squish the... Is that a white cloth? Ooh, it's too I think you need to have two because you need to like squeeze one down. What? Yeah, I what saw someone do, do it. I, I saw it online. What do you think doing? You have to like really go through. Because the first time I cooked tofu, I like don't think we did it right. Well, it's gonna dry out in the air fryer. No, but like I saw it online and they were like, you have to like squeeze it. And I saw someone like push a plate down. I've never seen that and I'm Asian, but. <laughs> I was just thinking like, you know, you got a dabber. Alexa, how do you air fry tofu? Oh, wow. It's really looking dry as hell. So see, now it's like getting, it's pretty dry. I know how to fry it, but air fry it, I know you can. Oh, make sure you get the sides too. This see? is actually probably better because it needs to be crispy, so air frying it is probably better. But the sides are pretty wet too. Why can't it just tell me like exactly? I don't need a whole blog post on it. It's pretty dry. 400 degrees, 10 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. 20 Wait, minutes. we have but the same one. Is this an air fryer and toaster? Yeah, it's the best thing ever. Okay, so let me cut this into cubes. We're probably not gonna use all of these. And separate green onions. We really need two bowls. The way that you're cutting this. <laughs> Oh wow, that's fancy. Do you ever just feel like low energy? Yeah, that's me today. That's I have to literally, why am I so low energy? Listen, you're cutting this well. 
That looks really good. Kenzie almost cut off my finger. Yeah, well, why did you put your finger right next to the knife? I was feeling courageous. We need to mix the tofu with cornstarch and all like oil probably before we put it in the air fryer. Guys, do you think that we're losing our minds today? The answer is yes. Dude, I'm not okay. <laughs> no, I'm not either. I'm like, I don't know if it's the light that's making me sweat. How much cornstarch? I think we can just eye it. Uh -huh. Three tablespoons. Oh, we asked you guys on Instagram so we could react to some of your uh, craziest stories. So we're gonna start doing that. But first, I'm going to put three tablespoons of cornstarch in with the tofu. I just like don't know how I feel about this happening right now. Nothing against tofu, it's mainly just against yeah. myself. And then it says we need oil. Isn't the point of an air fryer to like not have oil, but whatever. Oh, okay, here we go. Hi Dom, this is my crazy story for your video with Kenzie. This is actually, this is some Dr. Phil shit, bro. I'm gonna add some oil, mix this up, and now we're gonna get to the, to the stories. I was friends with a girl who shall not be named for almost 10 years. After we graduated high school, we disconnected and it was never the same. She DM'd me on Instagram saying that she was pregnant and hoping that I could be the godmother. Of course, I got so excited and wanted to support her. I was always suspicious in why she didn't want me to go to the, doc to the doctor appointments with her but I didn't think much of it. When it was getting closer to her due date, she texted me saying that she had that she had lost the baby a few weeks ago and didn't know how to tell me. Immediately, I was like, okay, something's not adding up. Well, the truth was she was never pregnant and she was just lying to me the entire time. To this day, I still don't know why she did what she did, but obviously I'm not friends with her anymore. Also, I would buy the baby clothes and items and we would talk about the baby all the time. I seriously didn't think she could ever do this to me considering we were close friends. That's cruel. Like that. Imagine being friends for 10 years too. Well, that's something that's like really weird about that story is like if someone who's like really off, you're like, okay, they're just doing that for like attention because they like need friendship or companionship is what I would assume. But like yeah. if you're been, you've been friends for 10 years. Yeah, and then you guys like reconnected and like. No, that is crazy. Yeah. Disconnected, reconnected. Yeah, no, that's crazy. That is literally cray cray. That's why I was saying that's some Dr. Phil shit. Like that's a no, yeah. Let's submit this to Dr. Phil, guys. Girl, you should submit that to Dr. Phil. Yeah. I didn't get why this has traumatized me for years into adulthood. But when I was around 10 years old, my dad woke me up early on a Saturday morning and said, up, up, come into the media room, hurry. I jumped out of bed with- When I was 10 years old, my parents did that too. They told me they were getting divorced. <gasps> oh my God. And I jumped out of bed with just a t-shirt on and my little undies running as fast as I could. I swung open the door and there was an entire this entire family standing there who were our new neighbors. They had two daughters my age and my dad introduced me and said they wanted to play Barbies with me. I felt way too old for Barbies, but whatever. The whole family obviously knew I was in my underwear, but I hurried and pulled down my shirt to my knees and stood there in the entryway and didn't say anything. I just stared at them. I waddled over and sat down with my legs to the side and played Barbies with one of, with one hand while holding my shirt down with my other hand. Every time I had to get up, I would just hold my shirt down all the way. I waddled over and sat down with my legs to the side and played Barbies with one hand hold, while holding my shirt down with the other hand. Every time I had to get up, I would just hold my shirt down all the way to my knees, thinking maybe they don't know. The parents were staring at me constantly, obviously knowing that I was pantless. I have no clue to this day why I simply did not get up and put pants on, but instead sat there for hours in misery of being naked in front of my new neighbors. I'm dead. That's also one of those things where you're like, I don't know why this is really stuck with me, but like I really Yeah, like, like you're just like, why the hell yeah. I should not have pants on? Okay, actually that triggered a story that I have. So when I, um, so we had moved into like this new neighborhood and you guys know me, like I literally wear pop tart PJ, like I would have the, ugliest pajamas like the ugliest pajamas i think this is actually so weird you're probably gonna think this is the weirdest story ever and i think about it a lot too <laughs> and just how like effing weird it is and okay and you're literally gonna be like this is the weirdest effing story ever dom and it's probably like not appropriate anyways okay so i so this kid was like had just moved into the neighborhood mm -hmm. And like our neighborhood, the kids like all played together. So he was like kind of knocking door to door. I'd never met this kid, keep in mind. And was just asking if anyone wanted to play with him. 
And uh, so my mom, being like dumb, she thought this was one of our friends, like Lisa and I, my sister. She like thought this was one of our friends and let him come into we the house. We have a story like that too. Sorry, continue. Yeah. He, she let this boy come into the house. Because if you're a parent, you assume. Yeah, you're just like, oh, this is one of your friends. And my mom was like, hey, uh, your friend's downstairs. I go, and I do not know this kid. I literally don't know this kid. And I like, I'm like, oh, uh, hey, uh, like, pretty much really confused. And I was like, mom, I like go into my mom's room and I'm like, mom, I don't know this kid. Like, I literally have no effing clue who this kid is. And my mom's like, okay, well, be nice to him and ask him if he wants anything. Forces us to talk to him for an hour. Also, how unsafe is that? No, but if you're in a neighborhood, like I grew up in a neighborhood. Like, I grew up in a neighborhood where like all the kids on the all block the played with each other. Yeah. I just did not know this kid. And I was also in the ugliest PJs known to man. Like these PJs were fugly, fugly ass PJs. Okay, so I made the slaw and that was green onions, Slavic sour cream mayo and butternut seasoning, which we didn't actually use. Um, we needed a little bit of pepper, a pinch of pepper. And you know what? I have that, and not only do I have that, but I have a little concoction here. Everyone watch. That's not a pinch, but it's fine. Should fine. we add some garlic salt? Do you think we'll be okay? I think we'll be fine. There's a lot going on in this thing. So the next thing we're doing is making the sauce microwave butter for 30 seconds, or do you wanna do this? Yeah. And I'll take over the storage really quick. Okay, we're doing some butter. There. Is that a some hot sauce? No, you can do two. I think two is good. I think two is good. I went on my first real date after being in a six year toxic relationship. I met this guy on Tinder and he was gorgeous, mm -hmm. so I thought it would be great. Yes. He didn't have his license, so oh. I had to pick him up from the Peter Pan bus terminal. Then, my stupid ass decided to take him on a walk to the secluded part of town, where he decided to tell me that he was writing a murder mystery where he was the main character and murderer. <laughs> that is so creepy. Why did that just happen? Needless to say, our date was cut short and I blocked his number. LOL. LOL? Girl! That ain't no LOL, girl! <gasps> Why did also the bell ring at the exact time? I know. Oh my gosh, I'm horrified, girl. Y'all have been through too much. What's your church camp story? What do you have for us? <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. <laughs> I had just graduated high school, so it was like my last official camp, but I was also kind of like, I was You're also kind of, of stuck. Yeah, like I was like, I'm a camper, but I'm also like a leader. You know what I'm saying? Oh, those are stuck? Yeah, that's fine. Shaft. Anyways. Oh, so this is really. Yeah, it's just hard, it's hard. It's not easy. Um, So my friend Theo was like our youth director, and <laughs> pretty much, what had happened was, we, you know, guys, at camp, like, things get a little crazy, and it was, like, one of those, like, altar call moments, and we had just been worshiping, and it was just, like, you know, like, God's spirit was upon us. Anyways, so a youth pastor comes up to my friend Theo, and is like, hey, I think, um, we don't know if this kid's demon possessed or not. Um, I literally, I hate everyone. Uh, yeah. So Theo, I don't know. Theo's scared because he's like, what if he's? I've never like, I've never dealt with someone who's demon possessed before. Yeah. So yeah. He goes up to the kid and is like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, because it says if you say Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lay hands on the kid. And the kid just starts hugging him. And I think he just realized, like, you know, hey man, I think he's a little tired. <laughs> he's a little dehydrated. He's uh, not okay. <laughs> like, but no, 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 no. Instead, he's demon possessed. He's demon. They thought he was demon possessed. Uh, turns out he was not at all. Not what happened at all. I think he was just, you know, tired. And was really, I, he just had a very emotional moment. So he was really, like, weepy. And, like, like he was like, <laughs> I like, he was like, I think he's just like having a like an emotional moment. I don't even have like the patience to like listen to no like I not like if someone came up to me, I I don't even know. What I would you do if I was demon possessed? How do you know I'm not? Yeah, exactly. Okay. 
this is about my brother's grandma. He's my half brother, so she's not related to me, but she's the best grandma I have. So grandma has a son and her sister, her sister has a daughter. So grandma has a son. We need a family tree, actually. Okay. <laughs> their parents died years ago and both my grandma and her sister's husband. Their parents died years ago and both my grandma and her sister's husband died. With all that, it's basically just my grandma and her sister and their two kids for years. They were the only family that they had and they were best friends. My grandma finally started dating again, years after my brother's grandpa died. So years after her husband died. Yeah. This was the first guy she's dated since and they dated for years. While they were dating, the sister didn't like grandma's boyfriend too much and always criticized him. My grandma didn't care and she was living her best life, always traveling, no worries or any other responsibilities. Living the life. Eventually, grandma and the boyfriend broke up and grandma was heartbroken, so sad. Not even two months later, not even two months later, her sister got engaged and married to my grandma's ex without telling my grandmother that she was ever even interested in him. Remember, this sister only spoke negatively about him to my grandma. Nobody even knew she liked the man as a person. It came out that the sister married him because he's for money because he's loaded. My grandma and her sister haven't spoken since. It's been years. They went from only having each other and their kids as a family to no longer speaking because of the sister's betrayal to my grandma. I think it's why I think a few things are wild. I think it's wild that the sister went from hating the man to secretly marrying him for his money less than two months after he broke up with my grandma. Was it really worth losing the only family she had left? I guess so because they've been married ever since. I don't know if it's a happy marriage though. Basically, she married her sister's ex-boyfriend less than two months after their breakup and never even told her sister about it. The ghetto atrocities that have taken place throughout this story are a phenomenon. And here's the thing, I am family or die. Like there is nothing, I will never be more loyal to me. There's nothing you, anyone says, thinks, does, acts anyway. I will absolutely not. Like my, I, my loyalty couldn't be, there, there's nothing that comes before my family. I cannot imagine. And you know what also, what really gets me here? I feel like you really never have the same taste as your sibling. Like look at who, I, I would never like anyone my sister's ever even like looked at. No, no. Just like naturally, but also that is, so messed up, your poor grandmother. We want to send her a gift basket. We want to send her a gift basket. Yeah. And I also want to just be like, what? We're focusing on the wrong person. We need to focus on the man in this situation. I don't care about him. I think that's a betrayal to the sister. That's what. I, the betrayal, he betrayed both of them. He he, but I'm saying like, there's something deeply wrong with him to come between two sisters. But the sister over the loyalty, sister, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I'm saying like, but two months later? Nah, I mean, you got me. Two months later? No, 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 no. Oh. He's ghetto, she's ghetto. Both people are ghetto. But sometimes I feel like they let the man off the hook, which is why I want to highlight. I understand that, that but like, the man wasn't gonna continue to be in her life. She was gonna be in her life. Yeah. That's her sister. Yes. Like, I know, I'm just saying like, all of them are horrible. That is like completely Lately, inappropriate, not okay, disgusting. Horrid, embarrassing, no. tragic, really disgusting, bad. disturbing, just really disturbing. If you ever did that to me, I would just. No, but like that would be like me doing that to Maddie. Yeah, I know. If you did that to Maddie. I then... want us to mix the hot sauce with the tofu. Yeah, that's what I thought that's what we were gonna do. I don't think that's what you're supposed to do, but like we're gonna do that. Oh yeah, well we have to. That's how they do it at, it, at the Taco. There's no space in this kitchen. Like now I understand why my parents are always like, out of the kitchen. This world's not big enough for the three of us. This tofu. This tofu looks absolutely banging. Really? I mean, it, I don't think it does. I, I don't know if what tofu looks good. I mean, just mix in, just mix in. There's way too much in here. I'm gonna scoop these out so they don't get too hot. And then we can make our tacos. Velvet taco, like we accept gift cards. <laughs> like we just go to Velvet Taco after. Yeah. You know what we should have done? We should have just bought the Velvet Taco ones. We should have door dashed them and then told everyone that's what we made. Oh, yours didn't turn out like this? Weird. That's so weird. I don't know what you guys did wrong. Can't relate. I can't relate. We're perfect, sorry. Now it's time to plate our meals. That's what real chefs say. I like can't get over that grandma story. Yeah, that's that's messed that up. That is literally so good. What a good surprise I have butter reach left. So normally if I have a taco, I get two tacos. Well, I normally get three and then I only eat two. Well, unless I get corn. So sometimes I get three. Do you want two or three? Uh, I could do two, depending on how good these I, are. I think we're gonna do two, because I don't, I'm not feeling too good about this. Yeah, definitely sticking with that, too. So we've got our slaw here. We have our buffalo tofu. 
We have our tortillas. like a, a gourmet meal if I've ever seen one. I'm gonna walk in faith and not by sight. <laughs> That's just the will of God. I mean, what else are you supposed to do? Okay, I mean, it looks pretty cute. It looks kind of cute, I think. I think. I mean, it doesn't taste like the velvet taco one. <laughs> Good. It's not bad at all. It's pretty hard to make something bad when it's drenched in buffalo sauce, but I wouldn't say it really it's not velvet taco. tastes like the velvet taco one. Mm -hmm. And granted, we got this recipe on Home Chef, but it was advertised as the velvet taco. And I completely copied them. It's not us, it's them. Yeah? I think the biggest thing, the largest disconnect, the dill maybe. The one I item that we missed. I'm just kidding. That's honestly not it. The seasoning. Honestly, it's not bad. Like I wouldn't go out of my way to make this. But it's fine. I'm still eating it. No, yeah, like I'm gonna eat it for lunch. And that's how I feel. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this cooking with Kinsey video, reading some of your crazy stories. You crazy. You crazies. Oh my god. Uh, but like, let us know how your grandma's doing. I uh, love you guys so much. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Do you not want investors because you just want more control? Like what is the, what's the benefit and the cost? So investors are awesome and one day we will need them, but I want to retain my equity until I don't need them. So from the very beginning, like I said, we started with $300. Every penny that we made, we put back into the business. We opened a smoothie bar. We invested in marketing. We invested in our team. We hired people like every single penny we made went back into this business. And so that's what the plan of action is to do until we can't, like we don't have enough money to support say a national launch with like a Target or a Walmart or something like that. Cause that is so expensive to do. Cause you got to pay your suppliers and you got to pay for all this stuff before you, to, so that these, you know, Targets have the inventory before you set launch. And then you don't get paid from Target for like 90 days.